Where technologically are deer's greatest opportunities now? The, uh, it, the greatest opportunities are always going to be around uh, our big, highly productive equipment, whether it be the uh, construction equipment we make or the forestry equipment we make or large ag. In the case of large ag, it's really going to be still about um, enabling uh, tractors and combines and sprayers to, to work smarter, faster. But what is really interesting at this point point in time, what we're really starting to see is what we call smart implements. So we just introduced a baler that has sensors on it that as it's baling straw, there's a optimum moisture content. And as that moisture content changes, you either want the bale to be denser or less dense, which means you want the tractor to go faster or, or not as fast. The, the baler is sensing that the operator doesn't, in the tractor does not touch anything, and then the baler is sending a signal to the tractor, okay, you've got to go faster now, to get a, a, a denser bale, now you've got to go s slower. We're also seeing that on a tractor to a combine, where a combine is now ready to unload, and it sends a signal, and the tractor, without an operator touching it, will drive right over with the grain cart behind it, and then they'll be able to unload, and then they'll break, decouple, and they can go on. And then uh, we're not too far from being able to do that, uh, if you will think on planting, where every, every row of the planter will be sending a signal and, and in order to assure that you get the precise depth and spacing. Because again, back to yield improvement, a tremendous amount of that comes from getting the precise planting of the seed, both from a space to space, as well as depth standpoint. You mentioned uh irrigation, water is fast becoming one of the most valuable commodities on earth. Can the technology help conserve water? Uh, there, there's, the answer is yes in two different ways. You've got from a farming practice standpoint, you have a uh, number of people are going more and more to no-till. And with no-till, you do conserve water since you're not busting up the ground. There are places in the area where you have to bust up the ground or plow it, so it can't work all over. We, we do have an operation in that space, precision drip irrigation. It, um, the advantage is it's much, much more efficient over what's done in the majority of the world today is just flood irrigation. And that's actually why so much of the, the water is consumed for agriculture. It's not in the U.S. Um, it's consumed in places like India where uh, flood irrigation is used and therefore there's, and, and not even efficiently. So there is, we think eventually, it will continue to move down of how can I continue to irrigate but be more and more efficient with the water I have. And the enabler of that ends up having to be uh, either you don't have enough water or uh, a more practical answer would be you start having put value on the water and paying for it. And, and if you had to pay for it, then you want to consume less. It sounds as if deer is in some senses changing as a business in that it's becoming more of an infotech business. Does that change the way you think about it or the way you manage it? Um, no doubt that uh, we're having to think about the information side of it. One of the big changes besides GPS systems and auto steer is when we put on telematics on our equipment, which gave the equipment the ability to communicate with each other and communicate with us back in the office. and. Um, Part of that is that there's a heightened level of sophistication that you have to think about when you do that. Most people don't realize that uh, for us an 8000 series tractor has more computing power on it than the first space sh shuttle. So it is really a, a computer right there, and, but we're having to do more with that. And, and as a result of that, we actually have reorganized the areas that touch that part so that we can have a group that does what we've traditionally done well, which is the hardware side of it and the embedded software that goes with it. But we've got another group and actually have brought in outside people from places like Microsoft to help us think about that. How do we get the application side of this right? How do we open up our open architectures to allow others to, to help us for the farmer make that much more efficient?